Hi, it's Ken with Under the Dot. Dylan, thanks for coming in here. Really appreciate it. We're in an anechoic chamber. Why are we here? The whole point of an anechoic chamber is to reduce the noise, the ambient noise around us, so that we can get a baseline measurement of just our device under test. In this case, we got a cell phone set up here. I've also got a microwave. We're, right now we're measuring at the 2.4 gigahertz band, and it's really, as you can see, really no noise or signals at this point. Yeah, it's pretty flat there. Yeah. So you talked about something outside when we were doing the interference hunting. You talked about compliance testing. Why is that so important? Every electronic device in the world has to go through compliance testing before it goes to market. EMI and EMC compliance is in place to ensure that our products are not only reliable, but that they're also safe to use with other devices around them. What are some of the steps that one or that engineer needs to go through to get the compliance testing? So there's quite a few steps and there's different testing involved, both radiated, conducted, uh, but overall uh, compliance starts in early in the design phase. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to be able to understand, you know, what's the standard we're going to test for. It depends a lot on the type of device as well as the market that we're going to sell it into. Uh, so you have to understand the standard that you're going to test to. Uh, then we need to be able to troubleshoot and do diagnostic testing early in the design as we build it up. And then eventually we could even do uh, what's called pre-compliance testing where somebody in house in their own environment can be doing pass or fail testing of their device to ensure that when they go to the last step, which is full compliance testing, that they're going to pass the first time. Pre-compliance sounds like a very important piece. And I get the impression that the reason why we brought these things in here is going to give us an example. So let's make some noise. Exactly. And so right here, I've got a cell phone set up uh, and we can turn on the Bluetooth signal. So I'll do that now. And you can immediately see it show up in the spectrum analyzer right at the 2.4 gigahertz band. It's a hopping signal, so it hops back and forth. But when we introduce the microwave, which simulates an immunity test, yeah. we'll see that the microwave actually induces a lot of interference on the Bluetooth signal. So should I see if we can turn this yeah, on? Go ahead. There it goes. Yep. Wow, look at that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It, well, not a lot of people know that microwave, household items like microwaves, can cause interference on our devices. This is all a really good example of what can happen. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other emissions uh, that we need to pay attention to? Not only uh, do we need to pay attention to intentional radiators, we mm -hmm. also need to pay attention to non-intentional radiators. Okay. So basically any device out there that has electronic components in it, uh, whether or not it's a Bluetooth device, which emits signals purposefully. We also need to pay attention to simple devices like uh, power supplies or cables or just more basic electronics. Dylan, thank you so much for joining us here today. If you have any questions or comments, please join us for the conversation in our social channels. This is Ken with Under the Dot, and thank you so much, Dylan. We're signing off.